Now, in these final few sessions, as we're talking about those types of problems that you would experience where the patient would show symptoms. In other words, these are problems which are symptomatic. The patient would come to you with symptoms. And the most common type of symptomatic problem that we have is atrial fibrillation. The most common type of arrhythmia and the biggest diagnostic feature of this is the fact that there is no smooth, rounded P wave. So the P wave that we'd normally see like this, before Q, R, S, and T, this is now absent. The P wave is now completely absent. So, we already know that if the heart was working correctly, that P wave would result in depolarization of the atria. It would result in blood being forced through into the ventricles. Around about 10 to 30 percent of ventricular filling is responsible for the atria contracting. And effectively, that's known as the atrial kick. That's them contracting. So you now know if there is no P wave you don't get an atrial kick, which means your circulation is deficient in oxygenated blood by at least 10 to 30%. What does sinoatrial stimulus mean? What does sinoatrial stimulus mean? The sinoatrial stimulus is the one that comes from your pacemaker. So the sinoatrial node creates an electrical current. That's the stimulus that's going to make your heart beat normally. That's the stimulus that's going to do P, Q, R, S, and T. Sorry, I just don't like I'm reading that first sentence. Is there sentence? Which sentence are you reading? This one? Yeah, the second one. That's the one I found confused. So in AF, there is the complete absence, in other words, it's not there, just read that bit, the complete absence yeah. of a P wave. There is no P wave in atrial fibrillation. The P wave is missing. So how does the heart beat? And that's what I'm going to tell you. How is the heart beating if there is no beautiful, smooth P wave? That's, that's the bit I'm going to explain to you. That's the bit which is atrial fibrillation. So, like, in, like, kind of like simple terms, the sinoatrial stimulus, what is that? The sinoatrial stimulus is the electricity that comes from the sinoatrial it's node that's right. going to make the P wave, the QR and S wave, and the T wave. That's what it's going to make. So, if you are 10 to 30 percent down, on blood flow, and let's call it oxygenated blood, what symptoms do you think the patient might come and talk to you about? Lightheaded. Great one. Out of breath. Lightheaded. Lightheaded. Fatigued. Dizzy. You might see what we call cyanosis. In other words, the lips just around the edge start to appear a little bit blue. Because now they are at least 10 to 30% down on oxygen in their blood. Now, you can cope with 10 to 30% down because it's not going to kill you. But it will stop you running for the bus. It will stop you running upstairs. You will constantly be gasping for breath like this all the time because you are desperately trying to oxygenate the blood because you are 10 to 30 percent down on oxygenated blood going around your body and that is not going to be a good position to be in but the most important thing is it ain't going to kill you but you will feel the difference so great question from the back which was dave if there's no p wave what is making the heart beat if there's no P wave? Okay, let me explain. What we have in the heart is we have your normal pacemaker. Do you remember that yesterday? In myogenic rhythm, we have our normal pacemaker, which was called sinoatrial node. The sinoatrial node is the numeral uno, the leader 
of the whole process. You can think of the sine of atrial node like a conductor that basically says to an orchestra, and one, two, three, and beat, and one, two, three, and beat. So each time the sine of atrial node sends a signal out, the heart will go P, Q, R, S, and T, and P, Q, R, S, and T. So each time the sine of atrial node beats, it means that the heart will beat. But now all of a sudden, we've got something, new word, which is called an ectopic foci. And I'm sorry, that's kind of an unusual word to say, an ectopic foci. Okay. Does anybody mind being, because we're all over 18, does anybody mind being on the film? No? Does anybody mind being on the film? Just for a second. No? <laughs> Come down here and we will stay socially distant. Right. So if you just stand there for a second, I've got you for Faye here. Faye. Faye is going to play the role of the lead conductor of the heart, the sine of atrial node. Okay, Faye? Mm -hmm. So you're going to conduct the heart. So imagine that this, or your classmates, are the heart. So if you need a baton. You need a baton. Conduct. I used to have a little point over there, but it's gone now. Uh, you can take it. Here is your baton. There you go. Right. So, like a conductor in an orchestra. Okay, you can tap, tap there. To get everybody's attention. Okay, tap it. That's it. Everyone's watching you, okay? And you're going to go and P, Q, R, S. Oh, okay. Okay, off you go. Off you go. Go on. What? I'm not saying. No, yeah, say it now. P, Q, R, S, T. And P, Q, R, S, T. Keep on going. Q, R, S, T. P, Q, R, S, T. P, Q, R, S, T. Who the hell are you going to listen to? Are you going to listen to me? 
or are you going to listen to faith? Sometimes you'll listen to faith, and sometimes you'll listen to me. But because you're so confused, you are literally shut and trapped. Shut and trapped. Shut and trapped. Are we, are we going? Are we going, guys? Are we staying? Are we going? What are they doing over there? Are they going or are they staying? Are they staying or are they contracting? They're contracting, we've got to contract with them. Or oh, they've gone now. Oh, God, we missed it. Let's wait for another one. What was the next one? They've gone again. They've gone again. And we've missed it again. They've gone. They've gone. And then occasionally, occasionally, they will listen to you exclusively. And it will go P wave. Boom. It will go, the, so I want a P wave, but the atria will contract. And then the ventricles will contract. <coughs> so the ectopic foci is literally a competitor to you. For some unknown reason, and we do not know why in biology, normally, not in the right atria, but in the left atria, I suddenly start sending signals out. Nobody knows why it starts to happen, but it does. And instead of it going a normal beat like you're doing, Fred, they go crazy. And they can literally send out up to 600 little tiny signals a minute. Faye, you're normally just sending out 60 a minute. The atria don't know who to listen to. So in essence, the atria panic. They run around like crazy. So instead of beating, they just quiver. And when they quiver, Faye, they don't send the blood through to the ventricles. So you lose the atrial kick. So let me just say that for a second. I'll just show you. Here's me. Here's you. You're sending out 60 beats per minute. P, Q, R, S, and T. And P, Q, R, S, and T. I, over here, am sending out 600 beats per minute. The atria don't know who to listen to anymore. So instead of them contracting together, they just quiver. These atria just quiver. And when they quiver, that means they don't, they, they don't contract. And if they don't contract, they don't force blood into the ventricles. And if they don't force blood into the ventricles, then the ventricles aren't full when they contract. That's why you're losing 20 to 30, or maybe sometimes 10 to 30% of the blood coming out of the heart, because they're not working anymore. Okay. So there's two, there's like the CBTH here. There is. There's electricity. Normally, there's only electricity starting here. But when we have this it starts there as well. And it's perfect. I'll steal that from you. It's overloaded. This overloads the system. So they don't know who to listen to anymore. Can we have a round of applause for faith? Thank you very much. Well, I have a question. Say again for me. Normally, the ectopic foci is normally in the left. And normally, Fay would always exclusively be in the right. Always exclusively be in the right. What the, what's the right part called? Like, so the right part is your sino-atrial node, your pacemaker. So Fay is playing the role of your normal pacemaker in your heart. I'll be Fay for a second. I'm you, Fay. <laughs> So Faye was playing the role of the pacemaker, and Faye was literally going, and everybody together in the heart, and P, atria contract, Q, R, S, ventricles contract, and ventricles relax. And we'll go again, everybody, and P. Now, now, with this ectopic foci, there is another crazy person who's a conductor. Not a sinoatrial node, but we call this the ectopic foci, this crazy conductor is playing a different bloody tune. So you, so you're the ectopic foci. I'm the ectopic foci. I'm the crazy conductor that's literally going, do what you want. It's jazz. 
It's free form jazz. Do we all play the trombone? I don't care. The atria are as confused as hell. They don't know what the hell is going on. So they don't beat. And if they don't beat, they don't force in that 10 to 30 percent of blood, which means the patient is 10 to 30 percent down of oxygenated blood. And you have already identified what the symptoms will be. What will they again? Breathless, tired, fatigued, dizzy. This is the one where patients with experience and coming to hospital potentially say, I'm having a heart attack, because they would feel the heart doing a little It's not shooting the question. Is that, is that something that you use like a defibrillator on to like help improve Potentially, it? and we'll come on to that. We'll come on to that because we need to get rid of me, mm -hmm. don't we? To restore normal rhythm, we need to get rid of me. And you take that to do that to rejig your heart. So how can you come about? We're not sure. So there's no like, actual reason on why we There's no. For those of you sitting in the back going, Jeepers, when is this? When is day up to suddenly appear in my, in my left atria and cock everything up? We don't know. Because I can have it now. In a year's time, I might get this. I have to say, I have to say, some research has suggested that it runs in families. But they've fallen short of saying it's a genetically inherited trait. Because there are too many people where it just suddenly appears from nowhere. And then it may go for a whole year and you've never experienced it again. Never experienced it. Do you ever do anything nice? It's always. Part the By all of you, it's nice. Now. Can I just draw you on this slide? Can I just draw your attention to one really important thing that I need you to remember, which is this one? Because we now know there's no P wave, because we know the sinoatrial node isn't functioning. And somebody asked a really great question before so, what the hell is making the heart beat, Dave, if we haven't got this P wave? Because I am a crazy conductor, okay? I basically produce what we call F waves. I produce what we call F waves. And F stands for fibrillation. So it's kind of easy to remember, isn't it? Because I'm getting the heart to quiver. I'm getting the heart to fibrillate. In other words, there's no longer a lovely smooth P wave. We now have these random little sawtooth types of waves that we call F waves. The rhythm is now incredibly irregular and your heart will beat around about 110 to 140 times a minute, often higher, but very irregular. Very, very irregular. Again, just to re-emphasize, this is treatable. It is not going to kill you. So let me just go about the little parts again. AF, no P wave, because the sinoatrial node is being overwhelmed by me. Faye is being overwhelmed by this ectopic foci. So instead of this lovely P wave, we see loads and loads and loads of what we call F waves. And F stands for fibrillation. So I'll do that one more symbol, make a complete idiot. Yeah, so fibrillation. And your heart, your atria is literally just quivering. It is literally just quivering. Instead, you have F waves, which are very irregular, 
and your internet goes down, or your sky goes off, or BT goes down, and you ring somebody up, and they say, mm, turn it off, and then turn it on again. And it works. And it works. That's kind of what they would do if they're not going to actually prescribe medication. That's kind of what they would do with this. What they are doing is they are trying to reboot your sinoatrial node. They're trying to get rid of me, and they're trying to get the baton to conduct the heart back to faith. What do you think they do to reboot your sinoatrial node? Question. Does a defibrillator start or stop your heartbeat? Well, no, because you use it to stop oh, it. Yeah. No. Is, you all look like OMG. You're telling me, Dave, that a defibrillator stops your heart? No. A defibrillator. When you put a defibrillator on, what you are doing is literally pressing the reset button. You are literally going, boom. You are turning the sinoatrial node off, and then you are hoping that when it starts again, it goes, oh, I'm back.
Now, if you thought AF was bad, this one's not that good. This is the one. This is the one that is definitely going to send you for the crash cars. This is the one that's going to send you running down the corridor to get matron or to get a doctor, to get anybody, because this is the one which is a heart attack. We can cope with the atrial fibrillating, but what we cannot cope with is the ventricles doing nothing but fibrillating. Because now blood isn't being pumped out of your heart to your lungs, and it's not being pumped out of your heart right the way around your body. This one is a killer. In this particular case, your ventricles are no longer beating properly. All they are now doing is they are fibrillating. In other words, you no longer have, you no longer have Q, R, and S. So unlike, just go back one guys, unlike this trace where you still got QRS, if we're talking about this one, you know QRS. Nothing. Nada. Zip. Nish. Gone. That doesn't mean technically it's just a flat line that you see on um, casualty. What you will see is just an erratic line. Your heart is just literally fibrillating. The whole heart is literally just vibrating. It's doing nothing. It's not pumping blood anywhere at all. This is an emergency, and it requires immediate medical attention, which will include resuscitation or the use of a defibrillator. So this is, this is definitely one where you will be going clear, mm -hmm. boom, in the hope that all the noise stops faith and then the new starts again and the heart will start to beat again normally. I have to say, I have to say that it's a very, very reliable way of, I know this happens enough, of stopping the heart so it starts again properly. When the ventricles stop beating, think about it. You're no longer pushing blood to your lungs. You're no longer pushing oxygenated blood around your body. You are literally, your blood pressure has almost fallen to zero. There will always be pressure in the system, but the pressure is now right down. You are dying. The patient is dying. I don't mean like we're all dying, because we're all going to die, happy day. What I mean is they're dying within the next few minutes dying, unless we can actually do something. Do we have a different feeling to oncology? Yes, we do. In college, right? In college. Okay. I have to say, I've not heard of anybody requiring to use one yet in college as a defibrillator. Has anybody used a defibrillator? You have it. So you know the instructions speak to you. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of talks you through exactly what to And was yours American? I was a smoking I was a smoking I was a I have never used a defibrillator. But the, the ones that I, that I, well, I have used, but not on a patient, but the ones I've used, it's an American action. Now, open up those patients. But it talks you through it, and it's, it is relatively simple to do, but of course you're stressed to hell because somebody's dying in front of you. Might I ask, did we, did we, was it a win, a score draw, or a... Winner it was. Why did the reason it was us? Was it? Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, it's a good I'll just flick over and I'll come back to show this last slide. That is what you've not got. That is what you've not got. So diagnostically, you've not you've got a rhythm, but it's highly irregular. You've got a heart rate, but it's no longer measurable. There is no P wave. There is no PR interval. There is no QRS. And the ECG is literally a wavy line. That's it.
And unless that defibrillator works, it's getting on. It is literally getting on. So when it takes away your arm, I'll, I'll come back to this in a second, guys. Looks like that. And that's the last picture that I've given you, Faye, on the handout. In other words, the heart is literally just quivering. Literally just quivering. There's no discernible. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> so it's just quivering for a box. Quivering for a quiver. You're right, Faye. It will quiver for quite a substantial length of time. And eventually, the heart will literally run out of oxygen, no longer be able to beat at all. It's not really beating, but no longer be able to move, and then it will become stationary. At which point, you are close to pronouncing death. Don't forget, you're not brain dead at that point because your brain will still be working. You won't be, you won't be conscious. You won't be conscious of anything. You will be unconscious now. So I'd like to, I'd like to kind of say, on the happy note. You're not in any pain because you're not aware of any pain. You are when it starts, but let's just give that to you. Did you want to go back to this? Yeah, yeah, I just want to. And that's the final slide, guys, and that's the point of the true stop.